Hi, everyone, and welcome to World Ocean Day Live. It's wonderful to have you all with us for this lesson all about getting to grips with plastic. Very soon, we're going to go live over to uh, Malaysia, where Sid Steenland will be talking to us all about her work and her inspirational activism with the Sea Monkey Project. Before we do that, there's some very important things to do. First of all, there's some shout outs, and then there's a little bit of digital housekeeping. Some great shout outs here. We've got Year 4 at Ashbridge School. We've got P5 at West Kil Kilbride Primary. Um, we've got Primary 4 at Mains Primary. Uh, we've got Henry Box students. We've got Year 4 at Norwood. Um, it's Rosen Science class in Ardley, New York. Hi to you. Uh, Mark First and Preschool Academy. We've got Fireflies at Winsley Church of England Primary School. Uh, Year 4 Jungle Cats and Cougars at Headcorn Primary. Um, we've got 6KP and 6S at Skeham Park Academy. Uh, Year 3 at Christ the Saviour. Um, and Amaya, uh, who would like to be a marine biologist, welcome one and all. For those of you who haven't been part of an Encounter You live lesson before, you'll find the ability to answer questions um, in the chat box to the side. That's also where the polls will appear. Um, so questions from you guys and then polls from us um, will appear in that chat box to the side of a video. Now, there are a lot of questions that have been asked. So instead of asking more new ones, just think about first whether there's one there already where you'd like to just upvote that to increase its chance of being answered. And that's done using the thumbs up icon uh, next to each question. Now, some classes you'll want to have the screen, uh, the video full screen at the front of the classroom. If you do want to then sort of interact with, with the box, some classes do have that open on a second device, um, just so you can have, have, have the video full screen at the front. Um, so that's quite a good idea. Uh, and then last, um, if there are any technical issues, uh, the support chat's accessed um, through the green sort of chat icon at the bottom right of each page of the Encounter EDU website. Uh, so try and keep support questions uh, there and then class Q&A um, in the chat box next to the video. Um, so without further ado, it's my great delight uh, to welcome Sid uh, to uh, World Ocean Day Live. Sid, hi, how are you? Hi, Jamie, I'm doing awesome. How are you? Brilliant. Brilliant. Well, not as in as sunny a climb as you are, uh, but it's an incredibly important day uh, for the ocean today, as it should be every day. Um, I believe you've, you've got uh, a fantastic presentation for us um, that will take us through some of the journey you've been on with the Inspiring Sea Monkey Project. Yeah, yeah. I can't wait to show you guys. <laughs> well, I will let you take it away. All right. Awesome. Hello, everybody. How are you doing? I hope you're doing awesome. So here's a little bit about me. I am Sydney and I am from the Sea Monkey Project. So I am 17 years old right now and I'm going to tell you a bit about my family, um, our project, what we do, and I'm going to tell you a bit about plastic and how to become an activist, of course. Now, let's get started. So let's start off with who are the Sea Monkeys, right? Well, we are a family of four. That's who we were started by. There is my dad, Carlos. <clears throat> he is the skipper of our boat and the Sea Monkey Project, the captain. And I'll tell you why I say boat in a minute. <clears throat> then there is my brother, Indy, the movie maker and animator. He makes little films for us.
And then we started sailing through Southeast Asia. So we've been doing that now for the past six years in this area of the world. Now, one thing we noticed when we traveled was everywhere we sailed, we found plastic. We found plastic everywhere. It didn't matter what country you were in. didn't matter how rich you were, how poor you were. didn't matter if you were in the mountains, the beach, the ocean. There was plastic everywhere. So let's look at the global scale of plastic. Why is it such a big problem, right? You're probably wondering that. Now, this is what we saw. So we realized that there are these massive whirlpools of plastic in the ocean called the five gyres. Now, you've probably heard of these before. If you haven't, as I said before, just basically what they are is they are essentially massive whirlpools of plastic. Now, when the ocean currents go around the world and the winds that go across the equator of the planet called the trade winds move, it moves plastic and the ocean and other bits in, in the sea into these circular formations. So obviously plastic is going to get caught in that natural cycle and it creates these concentrations of trash. Now, when people think of them and they learn about them, a lot of the time they are taught that these are the world's largest <clears throat> islands of plastic, but they are not actually islands, not at all. What a lot of people don't know about them is actually 97% of the Great Pacific Garbage Patch and the other ones. Uh, the Great Pacific Garbage Patch is the one in the top middle in between America and Japan. Anyway, 97% of it is microplastics. And I'll tell you a bit about microplastics in a bit. But yes, so the Great Pacific Garbage Patch is the world's largest concentration of trash. It is twice the size of the American state of Texas. And if you saw that other picture previously of all the trash on the beach, that was taken by me in Hawaii. I took that myself um, because Hawaii is right on the edge of the Great Pacific Garbage Patch and it gets the full force of microplastics that are in the sea. So let's have a look at microplastics. I'm going to ask you guys a quick question on this one. Do you notice anything particular about this image, perhaps? Let me know in the comments. I'll give you a hint, it's to do with colors. All right. So I'm gonna move on because that is a very difficult question to answer. A lot of people can't give me an answer on that one because one thing about this image is you will see there is a lot of black, white and blue plastics. Now, why is that? That's really weird, isn't it? Well, that is because all the bright colors that have been out floating in the big blue ocean have been eaten by sea creatures because it is brightly colored, it stands out, and it looks like their food. So this includes seabirds, seabirds that think that it is a fish or krill or something, and also fish who think that it's algae. Oops. Now, with all this information, uh, basically, our ocean is turning into a plastic soup, especially with climate change and all that heating it up. It's becoming a very realistic soup, isn't it? But it's very sad to hear that. But let's move on to a bit more of a hopeful side, right? So my family and I, we thought to ourselves, what can we do to help solve this ocean plastic problem, right? Because we sailed, we lived on the ocean, well, we live on the ocean, it we see how it affects our home, our playground, the animals that we all love, the people that live anywhere in the world, and just innocent creatures that don't deserve it. And it's going to destroy our planet eventually. So what can we do to help solve this problem? Well, we went through a few different ideas. And, you know, when we, when we reached Malaysia in the very beginning, we came up with our first idea to build the precious plastics recycling machines. Now, we did not invent these machines. They were invented by a man named Dave Hakens, who is an inventor in Holland. But he had the blueprints open source on his website. And my dad and I, when I was um, around 11 at the time, 
we took these blueprints and it was a good homeschooling project for me to help build with my dad. And we pioneered in making a very different type of recycling machine. We created our three-in-one plastic recycling machines. They are small, portable, and sustainable. Now I can lift this up and wheel it around myself. Now let's look at how it works. We have number one, the shredder. There are three separate components of this machine. And the first is the shredder right on the right-hand side of this picture. So you got to put your plastic, you got to sort it into your different colors and the different types of plastics, and you need to put them into the shredder. And the shredder will turn it into its into flakes. And then we can take the flakes and put them into either the extrusion machine or the injection machine. So the extrusion is right in the middle there in that hopper. What we can do with it is we put the plastic in, goes in, mixes and melts up in that tube that points over to the right. And it comes at the end kind of like a bit like a frozen yogurt sort of thing. And we can take this noodle that it uh, injects out extrudes and we can mold that into things like bowls plates lampshades or inject it into a mold to make lumber plastic lumber now we don't use this machine very often because it's quite difficult to use so we use the injection machine mostly which is on the far left there so the injection machine what we can do with it is we put the plastic in melts the same as the extrusion but instead it we can inject it into a custom mold and we can make some incredible things with this mold. Now, I want you guys to have a bit of a think about this, and I want you to type in the chat box, how many different types of plastics do you think there are? Because if we mix them together, it can make not a very good product and things can go bad. So how many different types of plastics do you think there are? Anyone have any ideas in the chat box? All right. So it, that was a difficult question there, but the amount of different plastics there are, there are seven plus. So there are seven main types, but number seven is the Elton John, the flamboyant one of the family who is the rest, as in things that we cannot specifically identify. So we have type one, two, three, four, five, and six. Now with our machines, we mostly like to recycle type two and type five. Type two can mostly be bottle cap lids from water bottles and type five can mostly be drinking straws. Now let's continue. So basically what we like to do with our machines, our whole point with them is instead of recycling plastic, we tend to use the term upcycling, which means turning an item that no one cares for into an item of higher value. So we are upcycling discarded plastic into an item of higher value. This can be things like coasters for your drinks or maybe even wall tiles, decoration in your room. It can also be our recycled plastic turtle pendant necklaces. This is the best seller on our website. We also make rulers for schools and education packs to give to kids. And with these machines, we have been able to work with some pretty awesome companies to recycle their plastic into items that they love and they give to their customers or their employees. One time we worked with Adidas. We made 300 coasters for them to give out to their runners in their Parlay Run for the Oceans fun run back in 2019. And a company that we have continued to work with for many years now is The Body Shop. So we work with The Body Shop Malaysia and Vietnam and hopefully soon worldwide. In the beginning, we recycled plastic to make these fragrances and we used fishing net that we collected from the oceans to turn it into a keychain. Now we make all sorts of things with them like hair combs, soap dishes, 
tube key things to squeeze the last bit of uh, product out of your tube and other cool things. Now, our main goal with our machines is to make things that we call cottage industries. Basically, we take our machines and put them into a small village community that is less fortunate than we are. They struggle to make an income and they're usually surrounded by trash. So we put the machines into the village, teach them how to recycle, educate them on plastic pollution, and they can make products from their waste to not only clean up their environment, but also make products that they can sell to support their own families. Now, we think that's pretty cool. We have a few different project sites like that throughout Southeast Asia. Now, one thing people don't seem well don't know about plastic much is that when you think of ocean plastic pollution, you usually think of it mostly being food packaging or things like that. But the big idea is that for around 40% of all ocean plastic waste is actually from the fishing industry, such as ropes, nets, things like that. So we saw this as a big problem back during COVID times in the first lockdown. So we took a bunch of different materials and when we could, we went back to our workshop and we made our first apparel line. We made our 100% upcycled material backpacks, tote bags and hip packs. So these are made out of sails from boats, kite sails and windsurf sails from kite surfing and windsurfing, of course. It's also got fishing net, fishing rope, seat belts from cars, plastic, and even the stitching used to be plastic bottles. So 100% upcycled, eco-friendly bags where a part of the profit goes to planting mangroves in Myanmar. Now, that is just what the Sea Monkey Project does to make a difference. Now, we may be a social enterprise now, but we had very, very humble beginnings. And we are still a still bit of a humble beginning ourselves at the moment. So let's talk a bit about, oh, sorry, I got a bit ahead of myself. The other things that we do to, con, you know, to spread awareness is obviously doing education. So we do waste education workshops. We do our plastic education comic book, which we did for World Oceans Day for Schools last year, I think. And I do talks, of course, just like this one. Now, this is the part that I was talking about before. So what can you guys do to help make a difference and start becoming an activist? So I'll give you a little bit of backstory of how I myself started doing stuff, getting passionate and enthusiastic and doing my own work outside of the Sea Monkey Project as well. So first up, do you guys know what the five R's are and can you rank them? Let me know in the chat box, have a bit of a think about it. And I will see what you're saying. Having a bit of a think about it, I'll repeat the question if you want. There are five R's to making a difference in reducing your plastic pollution. So do you guys know what they are and can you rank them? And when I say R, I mean like R, pirate, the letter R. <laughs>
All right. So we had another very difficult question there. It's kind of uh, hard to explain what R means. It can be anything. But anyway, let's have a look at that. So one thing that you guys can start in the very beginning to make a change and to build some healthy habits is by following the five R's. This is what I meant when I meant pirate. So you can start off with refusing plastic, of course. So learn to say no to unnecessary packaging. You don't really need a straw, do you? You can just drink from your cup. You don't really, maybe you don't need a plastic bag urgently. You can just carry it with you or hopefully you bring your own bag with you, but we'll get to that in a bit. And number two, we have reduce. So always think before you buy. Can you buy it better? And I think I will go into depth a little bit about, about that in a bit, but anything that you buy can be bought better. Can you buy it more eco-friendly? Um, homemade, local made, supporting certain communities, eco-friendly, better for your health. Anything you buy can be bought better. So number three, we have reuse. So replace your disposables with reusables. Bring your own water bottle, bring your own straw if you need it. And of course, bring your own bags when you go shopping. That's a key one there. You will ultimately save money in the long run as well. And number four, we have recycle. So after taking... The first, second, and third step, hopefully there shouldn't be too much left to recycle. But this is an important one because the recycling industry is not always reliable. So make sure that you make sure you clean your plastics and put them into the correct bin that goes to a credible recycling facility. And number five, we have rot, my favorite one. So get yourselves a compost bin, a worm bin, and let those little wormies feast on your organic waste because they will love that. Or you can throw your organic waste into a garden or anywhere into nature because nature will very much thank you for that. So as a consumer, you guys have the power to ask for an alternative. Always. You can say, you don't need a straw. You don't, I don't need a bag. I don't need cutlery. You can bring it yourselves or maybe you don't need to use it in the end. Because, well, as I said before, think before you buy. That's a great way to start off in the very beginning because plastic is forever. In a thousand years when we're all long and gone, you know, plastic is just it's still going to be here and it's going to be laughing at us because in one way or another, every single piece of plastic ever created is still around on earth. It could be in the air, it could be in the ocean, in the soil, in our food or in our bodies. It's pretty nasty. So I'm going to go back and give you one last little bit of, I hope, inspiration for you guys to start becoming an activist is the Sea Monkey Project, how it started was just my brother and I making cringy little YouTube videos, educating other people about anything. We did a video about dinosaurs at one point. So what you can do is you just have to start doing something. It doesn't matter how small it is, you, you know, What's stopping you, to be honest? You're never too young. You're never too poor. You're never too old. You're never too anything to start making a difference. So you just got to start doing something from little things, big things grow, and you get more curious. And then you learn more and then you do more. So that's what happened with us. And always have a great big dream and chase it. So that's how the Sea Monkey Project started. Um, And if you do something unique, People always love it. And if you're young, that is also to your advantage because people love cute little kids. (laughs) All right. So now um, I am going to pass it on to Jamie, I think, because that is all I have to say for you guys. And I hope you were inspired and I hope you learned something and enjoyed the pictures. (laughs) Thank you so much. Thank you so, so much uh, for that fantastic talk. I think we've got a a final poll running because I think it's just really important just to think about some of those barriers you mentioned before, a final poll running, just to look at what barriers classes might face uh, in becoming uh, an ocean activist, uh, an environmental activist. And in the chat box, you'll see a poll there and please do tick all of the options that might apply. I'm just going to read those through. 
what's stopping you? I don't know where to start. I'm too young to get involved. I'm too small to make a difference. Or maybe you're doing it. So tick all that apply and we'll use the answers from that poll to kick off the Q&A with Sid in about 40 seconds time. Thank you all for all your engagement with that. There's um said so there's 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 a lot of you know amazing 78% um of people who have responded have also said so about three quarters have also said they're actually doing things already. But also half half of our respondents have, have also included they don't really know where to start. What would you say to, to those classes saying, I, I don't know where to start. What do I do first? Yeah, well, definitely. I mean, just like I said before, you know, you just got to start doing something and that could be not using plastic. It could be educating your friends a bit more about the problem, your family. You can start changing the practices within your own household. Or if you have some big dreams and you're in some school program you know you can start making your own sort of movement or within your school you can start changing your school's ways and you could slowly build up to making a bigger thing and you know you don't have to be going to school for that because I'm homeschooled of course um, but yeah I guess I would just start with really educating yourself first on whatever topic that you really want to pursue and then you will just I guess you'll work out where to go exactly because, you know, there's so many different ways you can attack the plastic pollution problem. You just got to make sure that you know where you're going and have a, pa you got to be passionate about it. You need to be enthusiastic or else nothing is going to get done. Brilliant. Thank you. So on the educate piece, we've been working with common C's here at Encounter EDU. So there's, there's huge amounts of you know, units of work and lessons uh, on the Encounter EDU platform under the teacher resources section. And then I know also that there's a Plastic Clever School scheme in terms of taking more action. We'll come on to, we'll try and get those links for you uh, on, on the Q&A as well. But just to, to go through uh, some of the questions uh, so that, that, that we have, um, the top one, in fact, is, is it more damaging for plastic to be in the ocean than on land yeah that is a very good question there i feel like it, it i mean it honestly depends because when you say plastic on land do you mean a landfill or do you mean scattered through a forest when you say plastic in the ocean do you mean as microplastics or do you mean as like a solid piece of plastic so it both are bad, of, of, of course, <laughs> both are very bad. Um, if you have plastic together in a landfill, um, you know, I'm not, I, I dislike landfills heavily, to say that lightly, uh, basically because when plastic is all together in a landfill, it tends to produce more greenhouse gases. And those, you know, as everything decomposes together as one big lump, the greenhouse gases go in the sky and obviously contribute to climate change, which sucks. But at the same time, in the ocean, plastic is broken up into microplastics a lot easier. And, you know, I didn't explain this before because of uh, time, but when plastic becomes microplastic, it is actually worse than regular plastic floating around the ocean because it gets into fish's system uh, when they eat it and their muscle tissue becomes toxic. They end up dying of starvation 
we end up eating microplastics, not just from fish, but from so many different ways. It's in our water, soil, vegetables, meat, and we end up eating the microplastics. And microplastics and their toxins have been shown in scientific studies to cause things like reproductive issues in women and uh, um, ending up in cancer. Sorry, it turns into cancer eventually <laughs> with those toxins. So uh, plastic full stop is just very not good, of course, but it has different issues in the different terrains. Yeah. So, so to, just just on that to clarify, I mean, I think in, in, in the past and with, with some plastics, the chemicals used to, to make them uh, have have been shown to have have these um, toxic effects, and then and then also there's the other issue of just the actual physical um, plastic particles that can cause inflammation um, when they get in, into the body. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, so plastic has a chemical component in it that actually attracts toxins as well as the toxicness it already is. It also attracts algae and algae sticks to plastic, which is how plastic smells like fish food and why fish eat it um, ultimately. So yeah, they got toxins on it. It's not good. Um, obviously a turtle will eat a solid well, piece of plastic or a bird will eat it. Um, I can't, I think, I think, so. uh, I'm just going to say, I'm pretty sure that I read something saying that, um, all seabirds have microplastics in their stomach or plastic. Um, that could be 95% as well. <laughs> so you might want to look that up. I'm very sorry to give you that dodgy fact. I need to brush up on that again. Brilliant. And, and, uh, thank you. So the next question is, is from Christ the Saviour School, and they would love to know what one change uh, you would like us to make. Awesome. Well, I feel like you guys can obviously start changing. I mean, I, I'm sure you're already making a great difference, but in your own schools, you know, because I've seen, I've seen, I've been to schools and I've done events there, and I see the amount of waste that they produce and the amount of food waste that they produce is astronomical. Like I was blown away when I went and saw the amount of food waste at every single lunch session. So food waste is more so towards the climate change issue, but you know, all the issues are relevant here uh, when it comes to the ocean as well. So yeah, you can start working on reducing your food waste usage, um, food waste, of course, and maybe set up good collection bins in your school and start educating others as well. You know, I'd really love to see that because we are working with a great school here in Penang called Prince of Wales Island International School. And they're doing some amazing work with, um, they have one of our recycling machines in there and they are recycling their plastic. They're making products to sell to people and the profits go back into the, the school project and other organizations such as Sea Monkey Project. And they're setting up all these collection bins. They're working with the community and they're really making an awesome difference. And it's so cool to see that happening. That's amazing. So thank you so much. The, 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 the next question is, is from Henry Box School. And it is what do you find most challenging about the work that you do? Yeah, that's a good one. Uh, a couple of years ago, I guess, when we first started doing the project, I... You know, as a very young person, I was, you know, I was only a couple of years younger, of course. I was maybe 13, 14. I, I had this thing where people would be quite ageist. You know, they would think that, you know, I'm too young or whatever, um, you know, to be doing this. But, you know, what, the thing is that my age is what made people listen. So people would see this kid talking about this pressing issue and they start to listen, of course. So that was a, a great advantage, but it was also something that people like to, uh, you know, have a go at us for. Um, to this day, I feel like the most annoying issue is when people, I guess, they don't care, they don't put enough effort in, or they want to do the, the change just to look good and they don't actually make a change. Or a big thing is I get a lot of my family and I, we get quite a lot of criticism that 
you know, us kids, we shouldn't be doing this because we should be going to school. We should be going in the regular curriculum and we should be normal. And at the same time, the same people who have a go at us, give us that criticism. They're the same sort of people who think what we're doing is quite mind blowing and um, really making a change and uh, ahead of the game in a way. So it, it can be very confusing, but you, you will get a lot of criticism. But you just got to be like, okay, I know I'm doing this and that's good. I'm going to continue with that. I don't care about what you think. <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you. So there's, there's a great resilience there um, being shown and, and your commitment as well. Um, there's, we had a few questions through from, from Save the Oceans. The one I'm going to pick is, is how long have you all been sailing for? And if I can add a little bit on the end is how long do you think you'll sail for? Keep on sailing for. That's a great question. So yeah, we we in July next month we will have been sailing on living on the boat for eleven years. So we are actually in an apartment now for a minimum of a year now because we found it kind of difficult to live on the boat these days. You know, um, it's very hot, I guess. And you know, I, my brother and I are growing, we need a bit more space. So, but we're definitely not done with the boat. The boat's still here. We're going to be using it for educational purposes, for plastic pollution and stuff like that in schools. But I do actually have my captain's license um, to commercially drive boats. So, yeah, that's pretty cool. I, I just I'm just been approved for it, actually. So I'm pretty excited about that. And I hope well, I don't hope I, I will be aiming for more boats and driving them and maybe doing charter boats, educational cruises, things like that. That'd be pretty cool. And maybe eventually I will buy my own boat and live on that and travel around, do whatever. <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you so much. Sid. Um, there's a lovely question uh, from Gloria, who's in uh, Miss Rosenstein's uh, class, um, who would like to know, why did you decide to name your family the Sea Monkeys? <laughs> I love that question. I get it every single time, but I love answering it every single time. So the Sea Monkey Project was named after our boat, the Sea Monkey. And before we named it the Sea Monkey Project, it was called the Green Gorilla Project. So kind of the opposite of Sea Monkey, but that was our homeschooling project name. Um, but we named, we decided to name it the Sea Monkey Project because it's nautical, ocean themed, and, you know, keep it all together with one name. We got the name Sea Monkey, though, because back when we got our boat, my brother and I were really young. We were swinging off everything like monkeys. So my parents named it Sea Monkey because my brother and I are like monkeys. <laughs> um, fantastic. We've, we've got a question through here from Lola. And Lola would like to know how much rubbish on average do animals in the sea eat? And, and when it goes into the water, does it kill them? Or what, what, I mean, I suppose, what kind of impact does, does, does plastic in the ocean have on, on, on marine life? That is, yeah, a great question. So I do know this fact. Uh, yes, it is correct. So around 100 million sea animals or animals, I guess, uh, die every year due to plastic pollution. So that's, that's a lot. 100 million, I guess. And yeah, it can be a very slow death for sea animals as well, which it sucks. That's how it is right now. And um, that's what we're aiming to change because when plastic ends up in the ocean, of course, you know, animals eat it intentionally and accidentally. So say when a fish eats it or a bird eats it, they, when any sea animal eats it, they get the plastic in their stomach and because they cannot digest it, they cannot pass waste and get rid of it. They end up getting their stomach really full and they feel full and therefore they don't eat when they've actually got no nutritious food in their bodies. So pretty much all these animals die of starvation. And it's really sad when you see how 99%, this is the correct fact now, 99% of all seabirds have plastic in their stomachs and you see a lot of pictures of them feeding the plastic to their chicks because they think that that's the food and it's, it's really devastating to see that because you know that that chick is going to die eventually of starvation from the plastic pollution and, and it's really really sad to see so 
Uh, animals do not die instantly on uh, the impact from plastic. It's a very slow death. It's very painful. So it's not good. Um, clearly a, a, a very distressing um, and an urgent uh, pro problem that, that, that needs solving. Um, this is from sort of Henry Box School again. And, and a big theme of this year's uh, World Ocean Day is, is to think about how we can protect our blue spaces, even if it's not next to the ocean. And the, the question is, what would you encourage young people to do now, even if they live in land? Yeah, well, I mean, the, yeah, as I said before, you know, it doesn't matter where you are, you are affected by plastic pollution. And, you know, even if you aren't affected by plastic pollution directly, uh, it's still in the ocean and the ocean provides the vast majority of the air we breathe. You know, every second breath that we take is generated by the ocean. So, yeah, it affects everyone. So you can, I highly suggest, you know, working to working towards, you know, climate activism as well. You know, if you're more in land, that's more of a... Um, that's more of a, um, sorry, approach to take to protect the oceans is climate activism. That's a whole different kettle of fish there compared to what I've been talking to about plastic pollution, but that is a very common step to take. Uh, yeah. But of course, you know, if you live near a river, protect your river. If you live near, near a lake, protect your lake. And I guess you're still going to be using plastic. If you're inland, you're going to have landfills. So maybe you can try and make sure that your, your town is, you know, making as great a difference as it can. Maybe your town is a very big goal there that you can work to it. You will get there eventually, you know, start, you can start a bit smaller or go through your whole town. <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you. Sid. I mean, to, just to go back to, 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 to the point on the hundred million, um, marine animals dying each year from plastic pollution. I think it's one we might have to, just to check up on, I certainly know that the most recent estimates I've seen are about a million. Um, but if there's a more recent paper with a hundred million, um, it'd be great to share that um, on the on the on the lesson afterwards. Um, but we'll come to 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 um, we'll come come to the next question from from students, um, which would be, um, what do you do with the things that you make? Um, or, or how is the social enterprise going? And do you think that's the, is, is that going to take off, do you hope? Yeah, well, I apologise for the fact before, you know, it, it might have also been a bit, you know, you, you got to do very in-depth fact-checking these days to get it right. And, yeah, anyway, I apologise for that. So, um, yeah, so the, uh, the project, we have been working a lot with very big corporates i guess and that may sound kind of sketchy to you like oh why are you working with the big corporates the ones that are polluting the ocean but these corporates came to us and some of them we came to them to give them the opportunity to start doing something with the waste that they pollute the ocean with and the world so we've been working with a lot of really big companies like nestle i know everyone here hates nestle for the ocean pollution reason but we are working with nestle to help turn their ways around and the body shop and i cannot name a couple more huge companies right now because they tend to change a lot and i'm not really too involved in that side anymore and very much education sided so we have a lot of project sites around the world we have just seen a machine open up in vietnam and that's our very first machine in Vietnam. We have over 50 machines in 18 or 16 different countries all around the world. And yeah, that's really cool. So we are seeing a lot more machines going out there. We are penetrating into new countries, new sort of societies, and really getting the word out there. So people are really adopting this and getting a lot of schools on board as well, which is, you know, the very best place to educate people is within school. So getting a lot more schools on board as well has been really awesome to see. Well, Sydney, thank you so, so much. We're afraid, afraid we're out of time and sorry to the, all those whose questions we haven't been able to get to, but just to add on that, the, the, to hear the, the, the great reach of your work expanding um, to all those different countries with all those different machines and to do it with something uh, that has a revenue um, 
generation aspect as well for communities is fantastic. Sadiq, thank you so much for being part of World Ocean Day Live again. And thank you to all those classes who have taken part in one or more of the lessons today. Um, until next year, um, it's going to be goodbye very shortly from uh, World Ocean Day Live. But there is so much to do to protect our oceans, whether that's from plastics, climate, overfishing, um, or just looking after your local blue space. Um, thank you for being part of World Ocean Day. Um, until the next time, it's goodbye from us. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you so much.